Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again for this new session about creative and cultural industries. I am delighted to be the moderator of this session with Sarah Marnes, uh, head of the uh, AFD campus. And today we will have uh, numerous speakers, and there will also be speakers online. And now over to Sarah to start the session. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As you know, Emerging Valley was created with a twofold ambition, that is to create bridges with the different African and European ecosystems and turn our territory into the natural crossroads of emerging tech and entrepreneurs from both shores of the Mediterranean and this goes for the uh, uh, creative and cultural industries because culture expresses humanity, its need to for a meaning, it is about uh, social ties, it is about new and different uh, visions who will make us change our minds. So that's really what we need today. That's the reason why creative and cultural industries are crucial for our societies. They are changing. They're going through a digital revolution in the field of mediation or production, and they hold a great potential for transformation in all sectors and, above all, in access. This uh, culture and its uh, new uh, mediation tools are uh, widespread around the town's uh, territory. They help the city flourish and develop. And our city is proud to be uh, Africa's gateway to Europe. We, there are many cultural projects being developed on the territory, and they are uh, very often connected to Africa. So how can we go further? We can work together, we can support the ties we are creating between the North and the South. So how can we go beyond in public, public policy making with startup funding, donors, startups? This session will give us the opportunity to have an overview of great opportunities flourishing here and there. So I would like to thank all the panelists for uh, showing us all these uh, beautiful examples. I would like to uh, welcome Karim Amelal, an ambassador. Thank you, Karim Amelal. Thank you, Laurent Lardy, Deputy Mayor of Marseille. Uh, thank you, Sabrina Roubache. Uh, she's a producer. She is not with us today, but she's online. Thanks also to the CEO of Trace. Thanks to Ileo Maona, the founder of uh, the NPIC Summit. And I would also like to thank Adli Toma, the CEO of Gemini. Thank you, Pascal Olivier, the founder of LAFAC. Thank you for being here. We're delighted to have you here with us. The first question is for the Deputy Mayor, Laurent Lardy. You will uh, open this uh, session about CCI dedicated to Marseille. Can you tell us more about the asset of Marseille at the uh, gateway of uh, creative and cultural industries between both shores of the Mediterranean? What, how, can the, uh, um, how can the city attract ICC nowadays? What is its strategy? Thank you very much. Uh, Marseille has many has assets uh, for the CCI. This, a, this term can bring together many different uh, terms. It can refer to uh, schools, theaters. There are so many examples of these on the territory. And for the past Yes, over the past years, we've, uh, in, we've attracted many uh, CCI companies. We also have our own asset, as assets that are specific, that are part and parcel of Marseille's identity with the 
diaspora, St. Marseille holds a great diversity. And this diversity is growing stronger because it's been a limited, a constraint for a long time. And now it is emerging and locals are discovering it. The many initiatives being organized and this is because of the political will, but not only. There are also a lot of infrastructure. The uh, city, uh, the municipality uh, created a uh, center, a cre uh, cultural and creative center in La Belle de Mai. Furthermore, Marseille has a geostrategic position. Marseille was founded upon all the exchange, its exchanges, and now we are gaining another position, a, a position of a digital a platform, and Marseille is at the very a center of this a digital a network development. Big uh, companies come here to add uh, the network and to work. And still, Marseille is turn looks up to Africa, is turn towards Africa, although our ties have been have slowed down over the six past 60 years because of history, but uh, now they uh, were reborn and there are many initiatives uh, being uh, underway and now we uh, do not only want Africa to be considered as a developing market, but we want Marseille to uh, play, a, uh, to be become a platform to welcome Africa in Europe and to put forward Africa, to emphasize Africa, offer it to the rest of the continent. Thank you very much, uh, Laurent Lardy. So Marseille wants to be a platform and that's what Emerging Valley is all about because we want Marseille to be the gateway, Africa's gateway to Europe and now I'll turn towards Sabrina Roubaix. Sabrina is online and I hope she uh, is here. She, Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I see that it will be quite difficult to hear you since you're on a train. So as you can see, Emerging Valley is on every front. Sis, uh, Sabrina has made it possible for the whole world to discover Marseille on TV. So you've been promoting the territory, especially uh, since you uh, showed it on the television. Can you uh, tell us about these um, spe special ties, Marseille special ties with uh, movies and cinema? Good afternoon. I don't know if you can hear me. I would like to say that producers produce content, they create content along with directors who will sell their projects to TV channels and platforms and that's how uh, we can shoot and promote our city. And now let's talk about uh, history. I uh, started working as a producer 20 years ago. I worked with the Paul Media, the Media Center in La Belle de Mai. So I started working there in 95. So I started working there at the end of the 90s. and. Uh, there are two things I want to say. So Marseille is a territory that is quite easy to sell uh, overseas. So there is, so I have been working on the a TV show called Marseille and I was broadcast this on Netflix. This TV show was called Marseille. So when you say Marseille abroad, people know what you're talking about. Secondly, uh, there is this other TV show called Plus Belle La Vie, which is shot in La Belle de Mai, and we have it, which had, has made it possible for technicians to become uh, professionals because we took uh, local technicians and most 
most technicians and workers are locally based, but there are other actors such as Akhenaton. The interpreter apologizes. So there are some uh, connection problems with Sabrina. So, uh, Sabrina, we uh, will uh, give the floor again when the when the connection will be better. And now, I turn towards Karima Milan, Mr. Ambassador. We will talk about cultural diplomacy. It is a, a sensitive uh, topic, and it is one of the main priority of the French. Uh, French uh, uh, line of action. So now diplomacy, cultural diplomacy attracts young people. So there's a new reverse. So why is it happening? And uh, what, uh, what does it represent for France's position in the Mediterranean? Good afternoon. Thank you very much. And you're right. Youth and digital technologies are at the center of our policy, and not only French policy, but also the European policy. It is true that young people are our future. They are a pool of creativity, so it, they're important. On the other end, digital technologies can promote these capacities. So for all these reasons, as well as for economic or influence of reasons, we want to promote a cultural, promotion, cultural diplomacy through young people and through its main values, that is being open, being creative, being committed, And we also have to take into account the economic perspective because digital technologies can bring us jobs. And those are topics that are crucial for Europe, for France, and that are crucial for us to uh, promote co-development and respectful and sound relations with our partners, especially in the South. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And this is an excellent uh, transition to the second part of our debate. And we will now tackle a, a economy. We will talk about training and uh, funding for creative and cultural industries. And let's start with Mr. Uh, Thomas. Africa. Uh, so Gemini stands uh, as, a, as a pioneer uh, for the VC in the, in the African cultural scene. Uh, this can somehow appear as a, as a bold choice when you, when you remember that only 5% of uh, the capital uh, are raised by the sector. I mean, com compared to the, the $356 million that, that are raised by the fintech, for example. So what I want to know is, uh, could you tell us a bit more about Gemini's investment strategy? And also, why uh, did you choose to bet on the, on the cultural sector? Okay, merci beaucoup. Bonjour. Je, je comprends un peu le français. So, good afternoon. I uh, understand French, but I will answer in English. We at uh, Gemini Africa, we are an entrepreneurial hub for not only for Egypt, but, but for the whole uh, African continent. Uh, we support the startups and entrepreneurs in, in different aspects. Our uh, investment uh, uh, model, as you were asking, is based on three pillars, or what we call three M's. Uh, the first one is the first M is money, which is we are uh, an enabler for uh, money and for investment for our startups, uh, uh, not only in the creative industry, but for the different uh, sectors. The second M is the mentorship which uh, is the support that we are giving to uh, our community and our uh, entrepreneurs. The third M is matchmaking, which is we believe is very important since we are uh, uh, backed by uh, one of the biggest uh, holding company uh, in, in the region, which is Oraskom uh, Group. So we can offer uh, and uncover business opportunities for our community and our startups and, and, and entrepreneurs. Uh, having said that, uh, it's, uh, it's important to, uh, to share with you our, uh, based on, on the figures that you mentioned as well, uh, uh, to share with you our, our vision and our strategy. 
we believe that uh, there are a lot of initiatives and programs happening uh, in, in France, in Europe, in uh, Africa, in Egypt, in the Middle East that are doing great and have a lot of impact. Uh, we decided to play it a bit uh, different, to be creative like our uh, startup and to approach from entrepreneurial perspective the untapped business uh, that have n never been touched from the entrepreneurs. Uh, we identified three, uh, three main industries, on top of them is the cinema industry. Uh, and the question was, everyone is, uh, is telling me, Adli, come on, what's the relationship between the cinema industry and the entrepreneurship? There is no link, there is no bridge. But we believe that the, the link and the connection is the technology. The, of course, the industry needs a lot of uh, advancement and development in terms of uh, technology. And the ones who master uh, the technology and have uh, creative thinking, as Mr. Ambassador was mentioning, are the youth and the startups. That's why we, we decided to mingle between the entrepreneurship and the uh, film industry using technology. And we created a new track within the entrepreneurial scene under the name of Cinematech. All, we all know that we have ed tech, prop tech, uh, fintech, uh, green tech, and so on and so forth. Now we are, uh, we are proud and humble to say that we have uh, cinema tech. And uh, recently we acquired the uh, intellectual property rights uh, worldwide for creating uh, a new track in the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial scene. And not only creating the, the, the concept, but as well, we have run and launched many uh, programs, many initiatives, many activation, uh, and we have run an, in, uh, a pitching event in one of the most prominent uh, film festival in, in the region, Guna Film Festival, uh, whereby we, we had the call to action. We received more than 100 uh, applications. We selected 10 of them, and they pitched inside the, the, the official program of the film festival in, in front of uh, uh, a jury of celebrities and, and businessmen, and there were an announcement of winners and so on and so forth. So we believe that there is a blue ocean uh, of connection between the startups. There is an umbrella now, which is Cinematech, that can connect the, the new ideas. And uh, to give the space for my colleagues, we have been, we are, we are in, uh, uh, discussion now with Film Festival, with Cannes Film Festival and Khashidi Film to replicate the model that we have done in, uh, in the coming edition. So this is a quick answer. Maybe we'll have a, ch a chance to give more details. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. And now we'd like to talk about another initiative. Olivier Pascal, I, uh, sorry, I inverted your name and surname your name and yes so you are the co-founder of la fac it is a startup that offers a training courses for uh, cinema uh, jobs for uh, the uh, cinema movie sector between france and africa so what is la fac and uh, what can you say to investors since you're a cultural entrepreneur what do you emphasize? What do you, uh, what do you say to convince them? And thank you very much, Sarah, for this question. Twenty twenty one is almost over, and uh, we have a good result. So. Uh, let me digress. We are at Emerging Valley, and I would like to uh, thank uh, Emerging Valley because uh, it has provided us with uh, it has uh, made it possible for us to uh, meet investors in 2021. And one, two, uh, two uh, entities invested in Le Fac. The uh, funding was released yesterday, so I had a really good night. I had sound sleep last night. Thank you uh, very much. It is also a program uh, carried out with the French Development Agency, and we are really happy uh, to see that uh, uh, our collaboration led to this uh, success. See, that's why I can tell you a very, uh, very, uh, I can tell you some uh, news. Over the past few years, it is 
culture has finally become an opportunity for investment fund. A few years back, when I worked, when I worked with Afro the Africa France Association, uh, we. Uh, wanted investment to be one uh, uh, pillar of our association and uh, the uh, AFD has started investing in culture a few years back and there is also the AVC who are interested in culture. So we uh, have, uh, so you know culture is uh, make people dream, they're, uh, in culture there, there are movies and so at first we focused on uh, movies, on cinema and a few uh, months ago, we extended our activities to music and uh, we have many entrepreneurship uh, programs in this sector now. So there have been, uh, so there have been uh, two uh, highlights with the UNESCO report a few months back uh, announcing that uh, there are uh, five million uh, people who uh, started uh, working in the sector and that this uh, industry is worth 50 billion euros. So that's how investors uh, started thinking there was money to make. And we have mapped uh, our market as well. We have one billion uh, in financing from the a French uh, development agency and high tech as well, 250 billion in the world and 2 billion in Africa only. So I think that it's a, a, a huge market. Uh, and so, unfortunately, you know, we're still running after people and, uh, you know, after the market shares. And, of course, we have also uh, put the impact uh, in the forefront. Uh, so we should have a couple of hundred thousand in the next few uh, years, uh, something that we launched last week. So, yes, thank you very much for this wonderful success story. And so now, uh, thank you to Oliver Manches, uh, co-founder of Trace, that we don't present anymore. And uh, in Marseille as well, uh, this is a fabulous uh, bridge for us as well. And on the territory, just as in Africa, uh, you also have uh, training projects uh, for talent, young talents. And I wanted to ask you why this approach and what do we need in terms of training uh, throughout the continent uh, and education for um, profitability? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you, Emerging Valley. Uh, well, actually, I just wanted to say everybody knows Trace, but yes, but you know, some people don't really know Trace, but it was created about 18 years ago uh, with the idea that something was lacking on the international scene, a platform for expressing uh, Afro uh, urban uh, culture and music. And so we created with 27. Uh, uh, TV channels, radio, etc., that we created a few years ago in uh, France, in England, the Caribbean, and more recently so in uh, Brazil. And three years ago, we have decided, and this answers your first question, to invest in a new sector of activity which is a professional uh, education online. And so with our users there about uh, eight hours ago, we created a foundation for Trace for young people. And then there was a lot of young people who uh, were always asking us, you know, uh, to help them along in their life projects, uh, personal projects, etc. And so, but what people were asking for most was training and education. A lot of young people didn't have the means of going through the traditional uh, mechanics of education and 80% uh, of young people uh, under 16 don't do uh, advanced education or higher education. And so there's a huge informal sector for a lot, most of them and uh, some uh, go to other uh, jobs that aren't really that great and so um, we were thinking of what could we could do to these young people that have done you know um, what can we do in two or three years of study and uh, our project was co 
financed by the French government through the FASEP uh, plan and um, uh, to simplify we take we took the decision to create a digital platform that's called Trace Academia and then there was soft skills and entrepreneurship and I think that this was just as important as the uh, technical mechanics to enable us to learn uh, the uh, jobs uh, 30 uh, partners or so and uh, we realized that if we wanted to have an impact we had to uh, do you know um, have free packages and set up a co-funded uh, program and so that way we could give these courses and the people could access them but back to Marseille uh, you can see with Trace Ac Academia and Marseille you'll see that the development of this project uh, we were approached by the city of Marseille which through its uh, organization of international promotion uh, and through uh, uh, contacted England so we do have a branch in London and um, so uh, Trace uh, in London is uh, a person from Marseille and so we thought it was really he was interested in seeing you know how uh, Marseille could be involved because it's got the closest DNA to traces, you know, because of the dynamics uh, and uh, its cultural aspects, etc. And so the youth of the city uh, also, our idea was to bring solutions, you know, uh, to, through trace talent Marseille and we had a huge support from local partners it was a great success and uh, our idea is to invest even more and for all the reasons that I mentioned and that's why we're here today is that Marseille is really the bridge between France the Mediterranean as well as the entire African continent and the Maghreb in countries we are creating a very big hub in Marseille uh, for manufacturing uh, and you know producing co courses based in Marseille and also we'll be launching a television station a television channel called uh, Trace Maghreb and the Maghrebin uh, countries and we will be creating events there will be a radio station um, we have frequency with the city of Marseille that we can export from here and so this way we consider that here there are skills there's the infrastructure there's the support of uh, the uh, authorities and the businesses uh, that create an eco chamber um, and uh, this is good for this area which is called you know mainland France but also Africa and so the culture of course you spoke about a lot of figures you gave us but also that's all very important for developing relationships and new rapport between France and the French and the African continent we're talking about a common history a history that it wasn't always easy because after um, slavery and uh, colonization settlements but France has remained one of the major uh, powers of the world like uh, England or the European Union because they had this past with Africa and without Africa France wouldn't be what it is today that's important to say because uh, this way the uh, relationship becomes better balanced and this relationship that needs to be reinvented between uh, France and Africa and the cultural and creative dimension if it doesn't take into account this past then there will be a lot of misunderstanding and I think it's very important to come back to this and yes I'm a bit long yes actually uh, Oliver uh, that uh, he's actually uh, picking up on what we're going to talk about in a second at this uh, round table session so yes okay very good uh, we see a lot of projects that are being launched uh, from Marseille 
and bouncing onto the continent. So now we're back to Nigeria, Nigeria, which is the uh, heavyweight of creative uh, industry, uh, uh, Hollywood, third uh, industry, uh, worldwide cinema uh, industry, and Ujima Ona. Uh, who cannot be with us today, but who really wanted to give us a message to Marseille, uh, who was talking about um, this in Nigeria and Africa. And so, Aijoma, the floor is yours. Um. The creative and cultural industries is actually getting more and more attention, okay? And I think that is very, very important because it means that um, the potentials for the sector is being discovered. Now, take Nigeria, for example. When it comes to movies, Nigeria is said to be number three after Bollywood, but you know, understanding the potentials that this has will take Nigeria, help Nigeria to, you know, sustain her position, not just as number three in terms of numbers, okay, but much more having significant impact in the economy. And how do I mean? Um, the creative and cultural I I industries has the potentials to bring in inflow, right, of foreign exchange, which will help to strengthen the local uh, currency in Nigeria. That is one. And then also, uh, it has opportunity, it has the potential to also create jobs and uh, launch sustainable businesses. Uh, there's been a recent study that says that the creative industry is actually positioned, right, to become the second largest employer with the potential to produce 2.7 million jobs by 2025 and um, contributing 5 trillion naira to Nigerians' GDP. You see why it's important for, for this sector to be taken seriously. And it's also interesting to note that from this recent study, um, the creative uh, cultural industry currently in Nigeria employs 4.2 million people across the following sectors, media, entertainment, and um, uh, beauty and lifestyle, visual arts, tourism, and hospitality. So what we've successfully done is to use this summit to highlight, to bring, you know, professionals together, local, international, those who want to know Nigeria, understand what is happening. We help them to, you know, we guide them at the summit. They're able to get the right information they need, meet the right kind of people, connect them. So basically, it's a, it's a platform of successfully connected businesses. And we have some success stories right, that we can share uh, businesses that have, have come to Nigeria just because, oh, we put together the summit in America, the American companies who are now working with Nigerian companies as a result of their engagement at, at, at NIFS. Okay. On the TV side, we are very happy with what we have done with the French embassy in Nigeria. It's also always very um, heartwarming when I see uh, a lot of French companies working with Nigerian companies in the audiovisual, in the TV, either providing technology uh, or, you know, uh, training and different things. Honestly, first of all, I want to commend the city of Marcel for what they are doing, right, in pushing this very positive trajectory between Europe um, and Africa. And um, I, I believe that one of the things that Marcel can become the center point for um, creative convergence as far as Africa is concerned. So what do I mean? Um, for example, uh, during the summit, the annual summit, we can begin to look at having um, African movie premieres, 
having um, conversations that are really focused, having exhibitions, all you know, situated at the city of Marcel. I believe that the city of Marcel have got what it takes to make this happen. And like I already said, supporting the conversations around Europe and Africa is a right step in the right direction, but there is still a whole lot more that can be done. And so we will now uh, devote the last uh, 15 minutes of this roundtable session and what Oliver has started uh, to talk about, which is the creative hub and uh, the uh, you know relationships uh, and the rapport and the synergy uh, that uh, is uh, exhibited is very important. Uh, and uh, uh, it's very important to boost uh, this uh, cultural cooperation. And this is at the heart of a reinventing and the question of aid and assistance as well is at the heart uh, of what's happening and uh, really uh, moving forward, uh, bringing to the forefront everything that's happening. And I think Olivia really spoke about that very well. And so we are going to spend the next 15 minutes on this synergy that needs to be boosted. We'll start with Oliver and uh, we'll go around the table and end uh, with the forum with uh, uh, the ambassador. So, Olivier, on this topic, uh, the core of your activities is uh, creating projects between Africa and France uh, in cultural and creative training and education. And, of course, we know that in West Africa and in particular in Nigeria with uh, Nollywood now, uh, they're very active in the... Uh, on the, in the area of the seventh art. Uh, and so how to uh, increase uh, these projects uh, around uh, cinema and the feature film industry? Uh, yes, I think that Europe and Africa was always at the heart of the LAFAC, of the AFAC, and we uh, needed to set up uh, you know, these uh, uh, actually uh, shaking of hands and not just uh, stretching out and reaching out when we had to create the bridge, you know, between uh, Africa and Europe, as I said. So most of the programs that we developed were co-created and co-built with our northern par partners, FMEs, the Smut pour la Mode, uh, Kermik for Music, and systematically uh, adapted um, uh, with our southern uh, partners. Uh, we have structuring partnerships, uh, with the Senegal Virtual University and others. And to answer your question on Nigeria, yes, it's extremely important for the AFAC. And uh, we were lucky enough uh, to meet the actors three years ago. That's called Wazobina, uh, one of the main stakeholders of, of the audiovisual sector in Nigeria. And um, we co-built a certain program. And I was so pleased to announce that on the 15th of February, uh, uh, there is an academic uh, section uh, at the university campus, but it has been adapted to Nigeria. So I'm very pleased about this. And a few weeks ago, when we were thinking about and uh, about uh, what's happening to the AFAC, and uh, over the next few over years, we've decided to do reverse innovation. And uh, we went to look at, in Africa, uh, look at all of the assets of these programs and transpose them beyond the countries that we've developed in, and maybe bringing them back to the continent, the European continent here. And there are three topics that cropped up. Um, one is being frugal. Uh, because even over four years, even though we did some fundraising, we had to really be frugal and uh, watch our expenditures. And Africa is excellent in that area. And so we did things with very small uh, actions and activities. Also, We were transposing things, for example, we're submitting a file that would be of interest to the city of Marseille for the Plique. Uh, it's for the southern uh, region of France. Uh, 
uh, regional government and things that we're doing to the continent and uh, adapt it to remote areas where they're very far, even physically remote. Mm, and uh, so we do this in partnership with uh, third places, incubators, and the uh, Marseille and uh, Paris um, honeycomb, uh, and we have uh, various catalyzers, uh, and um, we have to take advantage of the realities and I think Trust does this program in Marseille, and I will be sure that this program, um, you know, could be a catalyzer and have a catalyzing uh, a effect and do the mapping and make sure that all of the activities that all of the entrepreneurs do here, that they can be cross-cutting. Thank you, Oliver, the last 10 minutes of this panel session. So if you could please just uh, do your uh, concluding words in two uh, minutes. You set up a, a Cinematech. You told us that before. Could you maybe deep dive into, into this one and explain us a bit uh, what is it and who is it aimed at? Okay, thank you again. Um, actually, t talking about Synergy as well, uh, and well, I can speak now. <laughs> okay, and in terms of, of uh, of Synergy, our uh, our motto is uh, collaboration supersedes competition. So we we believe that we have to work together in Synergy uh, to to make uh, leaps, not steps, uh, not only in in cinema tech but as well in the entrepreneurial scene. That's why we we, we work uh, as an integral part of uh, of the ent entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem, and uh, it would be a very good opportunity to thank Emerging Valley to uh, to be one uh, or uh, to to invite us here and to partner together in uh, in in uh, the ecosystem of entrepreneurship, uh, where the cinema tax is the part of it. We have to always to remember that the cinema tax is not only for the cinema industry, but it, it links between the cinema and entrepreneurship. So we are part of entrepreneurship and will remain part of uh, of this uh, ecosystem. Uh, the, the second one, or the second side, is the uh, industry. We have to uh, make sure that we have the expert, the, the not on only the mega stars and celebrities, but we have the expert, the coach, and the mentors of industry as part of what we are doing. They believe and digest what we uh, what we believe live in and they, they want to ensure that the technology is inside the, uh, the, the industry. Having said that, it's very important to mention the uh, African uh, dimension. We are Gemini Africa. We have uh, many and a lot of partnership all over the, the continent. We want to make sure by the 2022 that uh, Cinematech is spread all over uh, the continent. And, uh, and since we are here in, in Marseille, we have a very uh, potential program, which is wh what we call uh, un peu d'Afrique, un peu de, de France, uh, by using the technology in, in, in cinema tech. So we are trying to, to send the message that technology is not always very complicated. We have complicated the technology, like uh, the interactive filming, and we use this technology. Uh, we have the like digital studio, like what we have done in Disney Mandalorian. We have it in, uh, in, in cinema tech, but we want to send the message that you can use just mobile and mobile is a technology and we can use it for cinema and uh, and for uh, entrepreneurs uh, the last point uh, to make it short as much as possible is that we have together to extend the pool of startups and entrepreneurs working in the cinema tech using technology uh, in the feeding industry of the uh, of the cinema uh, thank you very much thank you very much olivier uh, <laughs> on Two minutes. Uh, you have two minutes, Olivier. Why is it so important to co-create and to mix all of this, uh, these skills uh, you bring uh, with the Sangor University, this project, and we see uh, this immense potential of this mix of or origins and skills. And uh, can uh, you tell us about what you think? Well, yes, I think it's rather universal. Uh, the world is a diverse one, a lot of variety, a lot of concrete projects, and we're uh, 
all the richer and do all of this uh, feeds into this uh, the confrontation these additions everything of course, we work with Sangor University, which is a huge francophone university. It works a lot in the area of uh, French speaking. And we are co building with uh, various curriculums, curricula, uh, with, uh, and all of the impact of this is phenomenal. I think it's the same everywhere. Uh, there's Africa, is a continent. Uh, with a lot of variety, a lot of different cultures, very diverse. And of course, with Marseille, that's one of the reasons it works so well with Marseille, because it's uh, uh, very uh, rich uh, in culture and this emotional connection, as the en English speakers say. And uh, of course, this uh, attracts uh, big. Um, in a big way, the cultural industry. And now uh, we will go to Sabrina Arbesh. Um, Sabrina, can you hear us? You spoke about Marseille, but you uh, there are uh, still water and back nor very recent films, and in Marseille they have a lot of big productions. And uh, what is the strategy and the territory to? Uh, be adapted in order to impose <laughs> it was broadcast in Belgium last year and it was the biggest one ever generated So beyond the background or the history, you sell, you know, the city and uh, since I started and the perspectives are to have, you know, international standard tools. I, I think it's great to have a studio in Marseille, you know, and I was even told that it wasn't uh, the thing to do. And then the president of France came. and said that Marseille is a wonderful place for filming and there is an ecosystem to build and we talk about young people new technologies and we have to live uh, uh, in uh, our time and There's hyper-connectivity that's coming our way, and we have everything we need for Marseille to become this uh, platform. And don't let's not forget that our youth, uh, a lot of them speak Arabic and different languages. It's an enormous uh, it's wealth. So Marseille as a hub of cultural and creative uh, industry. We can talk about investors. I have created my own. We're no long. We uh, we don't have any problem uh, attracting investors because it's a very popular area and a very well liked. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for uh, the sound. Not very easy to hear. Now for the last two speakers, Mr. Laudi. Can you tell us a bit of uh, the cultural uh, cooperation in progress and the perspectives for Marseille? Well, uh, there are a lot of them, and I'll just uh, focus on the major ones. 
and symbolically we are preparing uh, the application of Marseille uh, to become uh, uh, the uh, city um, of creativity and of course culture bears much more and if we look at what we work on there's the associations with uh, uh, African uh, cities and it's really important I think because you spoke about all of these initiatives that uh, there's uh, oh, um, an enormous amount of um, this all happening and uh, we should be able to uh, it's all flowering and culture enables the individuals to get together and it it was recalled a moment ago uh, regarding cultural diplomacy uh, we defend uh, the freedom of speech uh, today of course you know there's a lot happening uh, worldwide when I see China investing in cinema uh, it's not just you know for cultural <laughs> reasons but also to orient uh, thought uh, uh, processes and in Europe today uh, if uh, it's freedom of speech is the major vector that we are working on uh, yes I think that we can defend it in a European co co context in Marshall Marseille and beyond that an African context but I would just like to end by saying that I was speaking with uh, the uh, Swedish uh, Film Institute uh, president and we were ta they were saying that they would like to speak with us in Marseille on two topics popular education and uh, imaging for children because uh, each uh, uh, Swedish child has learned uh, how to uh, interpret imaging and uh, also the freedom of speech let's go towards Europe let's uh, offer uh, some really good platforms where we can work together and I think there will be some wonderful work being done together yes thank you very much uh, culture and freedom uh, that comes together that is so important and mr. ambassador sir the uh, Mediterranean Forum will uh, take place uh, in February very soon it will give a great place for uh, culture youth uh, digital what can you tell us about this upcoming summit well yes of course because this cultural diplomacy turned toward uh, the youth uh, uh, culture and uh, uh, we have uh, major programs uh, Safir for example Salem as well and we have to uh, place uh, the you young people and the diaspora in the heart of things and working with the North Africa uh, the Near East etc and as the uh, president of France had mentioned uh, on the 2nd of September here in Marseille and it will take place uh, 7th and 8th of February uh, and uh, there will be a economy uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, emerging valley uh, there will be emerging Mediterranean uh, will be at this forum uh, heritage uh, culture etc will all be involved and we would like to enhance all of these initiatives and um, they will all be at the heart of this event which will be a fabulous uh, um, festivities uh, and celebrating the Mediterranean Thank you very much, uh, Minister, sir, and uh, we we will, uh, as you saw, this has been very dense. We talked about su submarines, uh, the Belle de May area institutions as well, and a lot of you spoke about training and education, talent academia, and trace academia, um, uh, for success stories fundraising at the last emerging valley summit and so thank you so much 
uh, to all of you and as the ambassador has said uh, see you at the Mediterranean World Forum uh, to talk about the Mediterranean culture and thank you Karim Alilal, Sabrina, Lorana Aldit, uh, Sabrina Rubash and Ija Oma as well. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah, for your co-moderating. Thank you.